Welcome back to the World Series of Poker game page. I'm glad you guys are here. Thanks for spending a little bit of time with me today. Today I've got an example of my tournament strategy put to use. We're going to be taking a look at this game I played yesterday. I only played one tournament yesterday and I won one tournament yesterday. I'm going to show you guys my strategy. We're going to be going through this tournament really fast. We're going to be going through it quickly. I'm going to fast forward past the slow parts and I'm going to show you guys exactly how I used the exact strategy that I delineated in my last video to win this tournament. I'm going to be stopping the video at certain parts just to emphasize the most important hands and the decisions that I made. And hopefully this is going to help you guys out, give you a good idea of how to use this strategy. You could see on this opening hand that I got some suited connectors. So of course I'm going to play the hand because there's a chance that we might get something here in the flop. Nothing came out. Uh, you can see the guy next to me is making some funny comments about my profile pic, um, which that happens sometimes. People always do that. And here I said, fear me. This is like the old psychological game here. You know, poker really is a psychological game. And you're going to see it's kind of funny how these people next to me go back and forth with me throughout this tournament. But of course, we just folded there. And you're going to notice that a lot of the hands here in the beginning, like I'd say about half of the tournament, I just was folding the hands that I got because... They were really poor. See, notice how this guy is saying that, how can I say fear me if I'm not playing any hands? Well, he doesn't realize that I have an amazing strategy in play that's going to help me win the whole tournament. So here you're going to notice I'm going to fold this, and you may be like, why are you folding that? Remember, these are two random suited cards. It's really not even a playable hand at this point. And if you watch the hand, you'll notice that I would have lost if I had tried to even play this no matter what. First off, people are raising, so that's even more chips you'd be leaving on the table. And with this many players, somebody's got a queen, also another king or an ace. And you notice an ace did fall. You notice that the player who won next to me is because they had an ace. So this is why you don't play random suited cards. And here we're the big blind, so we're going to at least check here or fold Obviously, we have horrible cards here, but you never know what could flop. We got the small pair here, but once somebody raises, we're just going to fold because it's not worth really playing, as you can see. And don't worry if you're looking at your chips and saying, oh, man, you're not going anywhere. You're just slowly losing chips. We're waiting patiently for our hand. And here we go. Finally, here we're actually at the midpoint of the tournament, and finally we got a premium hand. And remember, as per the strategy, we're going to be going and raising at least the pot. But you notice that when I go to raise the pot, it's almost all my chips. So I just went all in. And going all in, you can notice that a lot of people fold. And those few people or one person that stays in, you have a good chance of beating them. Now, I'm going to pause it here for a second to show you guys something. Because I went head to head with this person, it's funny, but I actually had a 50% chance of losing this hand. And the reason is because a pocket pair has a 50% chance of beating one of these premium hands. I just managed to get lucky, but this is the way you got to play the tournament. And you notice something, look, I went in one hand, I went from having like just mediocre amount of chips, and now I'm the chip leader. It's incredible how the one hand turned everything around. All right, we got some suited connectors. So of course I'm going to try to at least play the hand nothing flops of course so you're like well that's not the best all right we got a small pocket pair here so we're gonna at least try to play it you never know and of course here i'm gonna fold even though we had a chance of making a full house because i didn't want to lose half of my chip stack in case i didn't make it remember when you're playing with this many players you have to be careful. Don't take too many chances. So here we're the big blind. So we're obviously going to at least play the hand. It's not the best pot. It's not the best uh, hole cards here. But we managed to flop the flush draw. So as you know, we've got one in three chance of making the flush here. And nobody's raising, which is great. So I'm getting free cards here. And there we go. We got the flush. That guy raised, but at the wrong time. Because he was just really bluffing, as you noticed there. 
All right, so now we're down to just us and two other players. So we could say that now we are at the end of the tournament. And you can see here that I decided to fold this hand, which it's a little bit controversial because, you know, I did have an ace. Maybe it's playable, but I decided to just fold. Um, I didn't think that it was like the best hand, so I was going to just wait it out and see what else happens. So here, this hand is probably the most important because you're going to notice here that the first player goes all in on this hand. So I was thinking he's probably got a premium hand or he's probably got a pair. So I decided I was going to fold here because I really didn't want to chance it. I thought, oh, this guy's probably got a premium hand or a pair. And this is a very difficult call to make. So this is like, this is the kind of call that it either will make or break you. But here I decided I was going to fold. And one of the reasons why is because I still had a good amount of chips. If I didn't have hardly any chips, I would just go all in because I wouldn't be able to afford to fold here because otherwise I would have no chips to play with. But since I still had some chips, I decided I'm just going to fold. I'll, I'll be a little bit more patient. And you can see here on the next hand, I get an ace. So now, of course, I'm going to go all in right here. And you can see this is really an interesting hand because we both had aces, but I had the higher kicker. Even though I actually got the small pair here, even if I didn't get the small pair, I would have still won as long as nobody made a pair because I had the higher kicker. And remember, in this situation where you go head to head with somebody and you have the higher kicker, you're going to win that three out of every four times. So 75% of the time, you are the favorite to win. And this is why my strategy works, because when you get to the end of the game like this, when you go all in, this is how you're going to eliminate players. This is how you're going to win by playing this aggressive. A lot of times people will just fold, but you notice how this is what enabled us to really double our stack here. And now we're the leader. We are now the leader. And you can see how we're in the driver's seat completely. Um, here, this guy survived. So it's still pretty much anyone's game here. But again, we got lucky because we got another ace. And I was going to go all in, but the other guy folded. And you notice this is also part of my strategy is that oftentimes other players will fold before you even get a chance to act because they're afraid that you're going to go all in. And they're like, oh, I have a bad hand. I'm just going to fold. I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose half of my stack. So that's exactly what he did. He folded. And here again, we just got some free chips. And here we got the like the the miracle hand here, the pocket aces. This is like uh, one out of every 220 hands you're going to get this. You, um, and so, of course, we're just going to go all in here, which is kind of a no-brainer. That guy next to us, he had to go all in. So it's kind of funny how we just got that. And, of course, we just dominated there. Even if we didn't get the three of a kind, we would have won because we had the higher pair, of course. So now we are so far ahead that at the next stage here, you'll notice you should almost completely go all in on every hand because we're so far ahead, we can really bully the other player to fold and take away all their chips very quickly because if they don't have a decent hand, they're going to fold. So here, you notice I just called because we don't have really, uh, a, we don't, the whole cards we have are not really good. And I just called here and surprisingly, we actually got the queen, the queen fell. So now all we have to do now is just raise. And this guy, he actually had a 10. So he went all in because he had nothing else left to do. And of course, we got lucky because we had the queen. So we won the tournament. And you could see how this strategy of mine of being aggressive, surviving to the end, and then really bullying your opponents is what will help you to win the tournament. You could see how easy it was. You can see how far ahead I was from everybody else. Hopefully this has been helpful to you guys. Stay tuned because I've got plenty more tournament examples to show you guys. I'm going to be showing you guys tournaments I played where I came in second place, where I came in third place, where I completely lost, and of course, when I won just like this. But if you follow this strategy, you are going to win more often than lose. Anyway, that's all for today, guys. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them for me below. Thanks so much for tuning in, and I'll see you guys at the tables.